So welcome to this new course on MVI architecture. Uh, this is the introduction video, so I wanted to talk about a few things kind of just before we got into the course. Number one, the first thing we want to talk about is why, why am I making a course on MVI architecture? What's the purpose of it? And uh, what's so great about MVI architecture would be number two. So number one is why am I making a course on MVI architecture? Number two is what is what is so great about MVI architecture? And then we're going to finish up the video by talking or showing you the application that we're going to build in the course. So just doing a short demo and maybe talking a little bit about the specifics of the things that you're going to learn so um, so let's get started so the first point why why am I making a course on MVI architecture for those of you who follow my content you know that uh, in the past or I mean even still I would say my favorite architecture is MVVM that's what I've been promoting lately that's what I think is the best way to structure your code but recently if you've been following me you've noticed that I've been talking about MVI you know I've been saying that maybe MVI is the best way to structure your code or personally think that or I personally think that that's the best way to structure your code and right away I want to stop there and I want to say right on the record just so you all know there's no best way to structure your code it is completely subjective uh, for the team that you're working on for your projects personally whatever you think is the best architecture is the best architecture if you like mvp use mvp if you like mvvm use mvvm if you like mvi use MV mvi you see what i'm saying um, so anyway, so so everything I'm talking about here is just my personal opinion. I, I personally think that uh, now that I've spent some time using MVI, I think MVI is pro is my my favorite way to structure code, and it is therefore the best architecture I think anyway. So so now let's talk about why I think MVI is so great and why I think it's better than MVVM. So first off, I want to say that uh, MVI is basically MVVM. It follows the same sort of pattern. So if you've watched any of my other courses, like my local database caching course, my MVVM introduction, uh, some of my videos on YouTube, you've seen that I've been using MVVM and it's been it's been pretty great. So I, I wanna say right off the bat that MVI is pretty much the same. You follow the same structure. You have your activities or your views. I know all of you have probably seen that architecture diagram. Uh, I can pull it up for you to take a look at it. Let me just find it here. Uh, that architecture diagram where you have, um, all right, here, I got it on the screen here. You have the activity or the fragment. In other words, your views. You have the view model, which doesn't know anything about the fragments. Um, you have your repository, which doesn't know anything about the view model. And then you have your different data sources. In this case, you got the SQLite uh, database, the Room Persistence Library, and then some remote data source. So um, this is the same general structure for MVI. It's the same general structure. You do the same things. You name your variables the same. You still use your different types of live data, mediator live data, mutable live data. Um, but uh, the, so the reason why I think that MVI is superior to MVVM is it's basically MVVM with some added features. So what are those added features? It's, uh, it's an improved sort of way to have handle um, multiple, I would say the main situation is multiple fragments sharing a view model. So if you have one fragment with a view model or a single activity with a view model, I think M the classic MVVM way to do things is the way to go because you're, you're not going to be cluttered with all these different variables, all these different mutable live data objects, all these different mediator live data objects. Basically, at the end of the day, it's not going to be very cluttered because you're just not going to have that many objects. You're not going to have that much different types of data. But when it comes to, you know, imagine a scenario when you're when you're sharing a view model between four fragments, five fragments, who knows? You could have any number of fragments. Um, that that scenario can get very complex very quickly with a single view model. You know, if, if every screen is different or maybe they have some overlap but not complete overlap, you're going to have a lot of live data inside of that view model. You're going to have all kinds of ob objects. Uh, if you have pagination on some of the fragments, pagination on some of the other fragments, handling that pagination is going to be a nightmare. Uh, it just it gets very out of hand, very complex, very quickly. That's 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 the punchline. So so MVI basically uh, it solves this problem. It, well, it doesn't solve the problem. It's still going to add some complexity as you have more fragments, but it's much much more manageable. It brings sort of a bigger much higher degree of organization so so organization is the key here and that's and that's um that's what the name describes mvi at model view intent it's like intent based actions you, know, you can compare it to the way that android handles um intense like start activity for results um 
uh, what is it, on activity for results, you, you have an intent, say it's like a camera intent to open up the camera, you have a specific intent, you create that intent, uh, the intent is to open the camera, you say start activity for results, you pass like a little code, and then once that activity or that intent is finished, you receive the result of that intent through on activity result. So MVI architecture works with that same sort of principle. You fire off a specific intent using a Kotlin sealed class usually. Um, you, you fire it off, you listen for, you observe the result of that intent. Once you get that result, you update the UI. That's that's the general process, and so again, it just it it does a great job of bringing organization to a situation that would otherwise be very cluttered and hard to read, basically with classic MVVM architecture. All right, so um, that's it for my little description of MVI. Why I'm going to be learning it. Oh, also too, I should have mentioned. Uh, if you take a look at um, at my screen here again, the reason why I'm making this MVI architecture course is because I was planning on doing this powerful Android apps, or I'm still doing this powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture course, where I cover Kotlin, MVI architecture, live data, navigation components, room, coroutines, retrofit to dagger to, and a REST API integration uh, to a server that I built for you guys to use. So it's kind of like a sandbox server that you can use to uh, test your applications. So we're gonna be building an app to communicate with that server. And I, and this course is gonna end up being really long. It's a it's a huge app, you know, there's thousands of lines of code because it's it's a real app. There's authentication, it communicates with the server through on, for authentication. You can post blog posts, update, delete, read, search, all kinds of stuff. There's lots of features. So I thought I would um, save some time by creating an MVI course. That way I wouldn't have to spend so much time on an MVI in the powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture course. So I could kind of, you know, maybe get rid of 30 videos for that course. So that was that was kind of the idea behind this. And I think it's going to work out well, because it'll give you uh, a good introduction to MVI without um, having to clutter up another course. So that's 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 kind of the main purpose behind this. So anyway, let's take a look at, at an application demo and you can see what we are gonna be learning. All right, so here we have the app on the screen. It's a very simple application. We're not gonna have a whole bunch of fragments or anything since this is just an introduction to MVI. But if you take the powerful Android apps course, which I'm assuming all of you are going to, um, you'll see me use a share of view model between many fragments and you'll really see the dividends of the MVI architecture payoff with the organization. So, so here's the app, it's very simple. Basically there's a view at the top here where we have some user properties. There's actually an image view here for an image. We have an email and we have a username, so pretty basic. And then below that there's a recycler view with blog posts. So I wanted to show you, uh, in the course I wanna show you the um, intent-based nature of MVI. So instead of retrieving that information right away, I have a menu up here that's gonna uh, trigger the retrieval of the, that information. So obviously this isn't like a realistic, uh, a realistic example, but it showcases MVI really well. So again, it's it's meant to be an introduction. So let's click get user. There's a one second fake network delay that's built into this. Uh, of course, you can remove that. That was just for testing and to make sure that you see the progress di dialogue showing. Otherwise, if the network delay isn't there, then you don't even see the, the progress bar because the network's too fast. So there's that user information. We got an image, an email, and a username. This is actually retrieved from the internet, it's retrieved from openapi.xyz placeholder slash user slash one. So that's where it's getting that data from. You can see the data right there. And then the second query, which we're about to run is openapi placeholder blogs. So again, like I said, just a few seconds ago, this is just a list of blog posts. And that's the next that's the next request that we're gonna make here. So if I bring the app on the screen, I go get blogs. We see that one second loading animation. And then there are, is the blog post that I just showed you from that URL. Uh, so that's that's it, that's all we're gonna do. But it's, it's showcasing a lot of really important things. Uh, all of the most important parts about MVI, just hit my mic. For those of you who are listening, I think I'm gonna post this audio actually on my uh, podcast. But, um, but yeah, it showcases all the main features of MVI. You're gonna see how to structure everything the sort of data state management nature of MVI, the firing off of specific intent-based uh, requests, I guess you would say. So it's uh, it's gonna be a good example. I think you'll really enjoy the course and you will definitely enjoy the powerful Android apps course. So that's gonna be it for this video. Um, in the next one, we'll get started uh, with the project.